This video series is about the three months when I traveled to a rural part of Korea where I left everything in my life in New York City to get away from it all and to see my family for the first time in three years. And this is a story about the perspectives and the renewal that I gained during that time. Perspective. What is it? It's something we all need to give clarity and meaning behind how we view the things in our lives and the world around us. We're good at seeing things, but rarely do we really feel it or understand it. I'm 31 years old and I recently got my PhD in something that I'm unsure about pursuing further. I spent a very long time getting it and it was very difficult. And <laughs> I'm not a young man anymore. And it just sucks because my future feels uncertain. But I'm also not the type of person who would do something for the sake of doing it either. Anyway, I didn't know what this time would mean for me being in Korea, being with my family, but my coming dad. back home, coming back to my cultural roots, I hope to discover new perspectives that will help me wow. with my life. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, here is the video. Oh, one more thing. I'm starting a personal channel where I'll be posting the continuation of this video as well as other topics that I'm interested in. So give that channel a follow. Thank you. Jason here. Um, I'm right now in Korea with my family at my house um, in Yangpyeong, which is on the east side of um, Seoul towards Gangwon-do. Um, as you can tell, uh, this place is very rural and uh, very serene and peaceful. And it's very scenic mainly because of the mountains and the the modern houses that are embedded in between and it's just really really scenic here <laughs> and I really like it so today I'm gonna give you guys a tour of this neighborhood and so come with me so this is my neighborhood you know, it's very cozy and it's peaceful the little houses here are very cute so most of these houses are either owned by people who have retired and they have sort of settled down and or like really rich people who just needed like a getaway weekend house uh, actually you don't have to be that rich it's a, it's, a, it's a decent neighborhood and as you tell there's more constructions that's being held So back in New York City, I was doing a lot of different things. YouTube, PhD, startup, it was just hectic. But here, life is simple and I feel so, so connected to myself. It was just relaxing, just getting away and seeing my family. I did a ton of strolling, exploring town and I really loved it. And speaking of getaways, I want to let you guys know about Hopper, who is the sponsor of this video. And on November 30th, Hopper will be hosting Travel Tuesday. They will be offering special deals on flights and hotels. 
Think of Cyber Monday or Black Friday. So Hopper helps you find the cheapest travel deals by monitoring prices 24-7. And it notifies exactly when to buy or when to wait. Just select the watch a trip feature on your select booking in the app and it will automatically notify you when the best prices become available. And their price prediction technology has 95% accuracy. So you can be rest assured that you're getting the best price. What I love about Hopper is that it simplifies the whole process. They have color-coded calendars, which makes it super easy to find cheapest travel dates. For example, green equals best deal and red equals most expensive. Also, Hopper has a reward program called Care Cash, where you can earn travel credits for every single booking you make on the app. And right now, new users that download the app using the link in the description and signs up for a free account will receive $10 in care cash. And this can be applied to your first hotel booking using the app. Basically, you're getting $10 for downloading an app. So why not? So get the app right now and get notified about the Travel Deal Tuesday. They will be offering exclusive deals on domestic as well as international flights and hotel stays. <laughs> That's someone else's house, but they have really lovely garden there. I want to show you guys. So, yeah, so that's what people do here. They uh, <laughs> have farms and they just relax. Actually, actually, I'm not too sure what kind of people that live here. Supposedly, my dad says either it's people that have lived here forever or it's like the, uh, um, the outsiders who just are trying to get a new life. Huh? Oh, there's my mom. My mom. <laughs> She's already out without me. Mama, you saw Video chiga. Oh, you got? I'm going to go to the house. Huh? Chiba, My mom's a little camera shy. She kind of froze up there. <laughs> anyway. Let's keep walking. So that's the KTX um, train rail from somewhere in Seoul to Gangwondo. And it's a really fast way to get from Seoul to Gangwondo. <laughs> anyway, I'm just going back, going back up the hill. If you see over there, this, this building a month ago was not built. Uh, actually a month and a half ago when I first got to Korea. This was just a barren land. I'll show you a video here, but the rapid pace in which they built this foundation and this house together in a span of like two months shows just incredible work efficiency and speed in which um, Korean buildings are constructed in. And this is exemplary of Korean society. Just got to the top and I just want to show you guys this in incredible mansion of a house here because I thought it looked exactly like the house from Parasite, the movie Parasite, I don't know if you guys seen it with the black wall uh, and, the, and the gateway and then and that's where uh, Mr. Wu lives in so on the, to the right is my house uh, let me do a house tour from here so here is a little garage that my dad never uses because it's so narrow and small it's hard to fit a car in here and I've never been inside this thing here it's actually my first time going here I want to see what's in this, um, in this shed. Uh, it's kind of sketchy, but... Oh, wow. Do you see that? There's a, there's a grass growing on this chair. Uh, it seems like nobody has been here for a while. So on the shed back here... Wait, is that, is that a lawnmower? Bruh. There's a lawnmower. Anyway, um, that was a shack. Here is the backyard, and there is the manual lawnmower. It's really hard to cut with this thing, and it's kind of broken. Uh, there should be a roller here that helps you. Oh. Uh, okay. So here is a little uh, outdoor. Um, what is this called? Uh, cabana? I don't know, but is uh, meant for like sort of a gathering space. Now it's just a bunch of old tools and a ladder. 
And really, really old onions that are just hanging from this tree. I think it's uh, there to shed off the vampires that live in the wilderness. Um, here is a bunch of um, clay pots that... So these are supposed to hold a bunch of like condiment, Korean condiments and, and it's, they're supposed to ferment inside these things over like periods of years. But as you could tell, uh, these are just for decoration. Uh, there's nothing under, nothing in them. They're not even flipped the proper way. Um, hey, but they look nice and it looks like a, like an authentic Korean house. <laughs> so here is the house. Uh, it looks like a very typical, like a suburban house in America. But what's different here is that unlike American houses, Korea has these sort of um, entryways. Like, like the so in Korea, everybody has uh, one of these um, keyless locks where you just have to put in um, your code. So the code is my dad's birthday, but and if you guys ever want to come in here, just gotta remember my dad's birthday and give him a shout out. Um, so this is a very old style house. Uh, and this furniture is like classic throwback 1990s, like classic Italian wood furniture. Here, uh, you, I have my old faithful um, chicken breast. Uh, I bought it at a convenience store. It's like, uh, here is a, it's a closet and sort of a guest room and here my parents hang their very colorful jackets uh, as you, if you guys didn't know, Korean people were very very colorful or older Korean people were very very like bright colors so when I came here, I bought my dad a jacket no, I can't find it, it should be here somewhere anyway, it's a Burberry jacket, I just wanted to show off <laughs> Korean people love, love brand name stuff I got my dad a Burberry jacket and I got my mom her first like name brand bag, a uh, Prada like backpack. My parents actually don't care about like brand name stuff. Anyway, uh, let me, let's do the kitchen tour. Here is the old kitchen. I have some um, ready-made um, coffee mix. If you know anything about Korean, uh, ready-made coffee mixes, these are cracked. And I forgot that I already made a cup here and I think this is very cold. I'm gonna drink it anyway. Mm. Mm, that's, that's so good. Ah. So nothing fancy about this house. Uh, this is a very old school style house. But anyway, continuing, we go upstairs. So here is where like most of uh, the living happens. And here's where my parents exercise. And the yoga Here is their workbench. Um, here's the TV. And this is, you can sit down and watch the TV. And I uh, just want to show you an old picture of me. This was when I was in high school in 2006 or 5, I believe. But lastly, I just want to show you guys the, um, the outside view from the house. So this outdoor view is the money maker of the house, basically. Uh, and this is the main reason why my dad decided to live here and uh, as you can tell the view is just fantastic uh, you can see down uh, the, the the hill and there's like you know, beautiful houses and there's like the uh, the mountain range is covering this area and below it there's actually uh, the river I'll show you later there's the Han River and uh, we have a train track that goes right in front of the house it's very, very sort of rustic. It's not something that's uh, that could be felt in like Seoul. But yeah, this is basically the tour of the house. Uh, next, I'm gonna roll some old footages of this neighborhood that I think are exquisite and really beautiful, and I'll just narrate over that. As you can see here, life is so peaceful and calming in this town. While I still had lots of worries for my life and for my future, but just coming back here to a place that I can call home and a loving family that welcomes me, I realize how truly lucky and blessed I am. And this is not something that everyone has and I don't ever want to take it for granted. And the biggest lesson here is that life is all about perspectives and that happiness comes from a place of being able to enjoy what you already have and being able to appreciate the people in your life and the things that are surrounding you. 
and no amount of money, wealth, success, or anything material could give you that kind of feeling. So the first watermelon popped in um, like two months ago. And I can't believe this thing was raised in our own backyard. And that's just incredible to me. Oh! <laughs> that looks amazing. I don't know how it's gonna taste, but let me let me cut it into. Check that out. Let's give it a taste. Mmm. Mmm. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you like what you saw here, make sure to give a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of this sort of content, give a subscribe. And thank you as always. And we'll see you in the next episode. Peace.